Japanese Convention Center, South Meeting Room, 501 Rio Contra Drive, San Angelo, Texas, for the purpose of considering the following agenda items. Uh, we'll start with public comment. Do we have any public comment? If you're able to read that paragraph, please. Again? If you're able to read the, the paragraph in the agenda about... Oh, okay. Issues or items that are not on the agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak from the podium and begin by stating your name and limit your remarks to less than three minutes. Committee members may request that a discussed item be placed on a future agenda, and the committee takes public comment at all regular, on all regular agenda items during the discussion of those items. Dan, any public comment? There being none, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, item A is discussion of possible action related to the request for proposal for adoption services. And with that, Ms. Wilson, do you want to recuse yourself? Yeah, given that this is um, this is likely something that Paws would like to respond to, I'm going to recuse myself at this at this time. Okay. And with that, we lose a quorum. I do have somebody checking to see. Um, uh, we had one member that was definite he was going to be here today and another member who um, indicated that he would also be here so um, we might want to recess for a minute recess for a minute and and see if they are coming down the hall right now i appreciate y'all being here and uh, we'll try to deal with this as fast as we can okay and we're in recess until we hear a response back thank you to order what i have before y'all uh, this afternoon Um, what I have before y'all this afternoon is the opportunity uh, for the city to go out for a request for proposal uh, for professional services uh, to handle our animal adoptions. And so as you'll recall, um, uh, we are currently in our first year of our first contract of doing this. Uh, this contract is scheduled to expire February 28th, and so we wanted to get ahead of schedule uh, to uh, get the proposal to y'all to make sure it's something comfortable y'all were comfortable with that that was what we would be assigning uh, to any vendors that came forward and then we would uh, be able to review the uh, put that out for uh, requests for submissions those submissions could come in we could review them um, get it before the council for the final contract approval um, in t well in advance of that deadline of the existing contracts end so uh, I'll, I'll just hit the high points. I think a lot of y'all, it was in your background, and I think a lot of y'all are familiar to the day-to-day -day operations of this, uh, but is, it is for animal adoption services. This would be assigning animal adoptions to a welfare organization, which frees up city staff to focus on our, our core function. Uh, what we found is that we really needed to focus on animal control, uh, disease control, um, and we needed to make sure that we had sufficient staff to do those functions, uh, that those staff were trained, were well um, educated in uh, what those items are to ensure the community's public safety and that the public health was served. Uh, because uh, as I'm sure a lot of y'all are aware, animal adoptions, uh, your work is never done. It's a constant um, drain on any resource you have available and um, it, it's difficult to keep your eye on the, the major things that we have to be doing as an organization uh, when you see you know, one more animal that, that needs your attention. So uh, we found a lot of success with that in our early um, contracts so far. Um, Okay, so as I mentioned, the current contract is with Contra Valley Paws. Um, that is set to expire February 28th, so that was just a 12-month uh, agreement that we had. Uh, there were no options to renew that contract, which is something I would recommend adding, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, so that's why we're back before you, because we did need to do a new um, request for proposal. I also point out that I have our uh, purchasing staff here who is largely instrumental in doing these types of things for the city and they can speak to any technicalities or legalities of how this whole process works and so if y'all have questions um, specifically about our functionality day to day versus um, requests for proposals in general uh, we're prepared to answer any of that okay. Um, I did want to point out that the draft proposal before you today uh, does include uh, updated terms, uh, the scope of, uh, and that is related to the um, time of service. So I would propose another one-year contract, but that it would have four options to renew. So it could grow to be a five-year contract, and it would be an easy thing to execute that as we're uh, approaching another 
contract year end uh, that we would just notify one or either party would say, yes, we're continuing and, and op, uh, using our option to renew um, into a new year. I think that having a longer term um, on that contract as far as time is going to be really beneficial uh, because it's difficult for us to plan if I don't know what April, May, June are going to look like. Um, if, if this contract ends February 28th and I don't know what the future is, I don't know what I to do about staffing, um, budget, facility, things like that. And so I think having a more long-term approach but still segmenting it out into those 12-month periods is something that provides flexibility uh, for both parties but also serves the greater good of being able to um, do uh, long-term planning. So the scope of service is um, largely unchanged. Uh, just I, I keep saying it, but it's mainly to provide adoption services. Uh, we've interpreted that as cats and dogs, um, livestock, things like that, that that get adopted. We're still handling on our end, um, which is an, an easy thing to do. That is not a great uh, strain on our um, tasks. So uh, it, it goes out to spell out that you would match animals with customers, you would host adoption events, um, things like that. And so that's largely unchanged uh, from the prior um, uh, RFP and contract that we did. Would that mean that if someone turned in an adoptable ferret or guinea pig, do you all handle that or That's would correct. pause? So any um, pocket pets, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, quite frankly, I don't have an adoption fee for those. Um, what was discussed in fee review with the council was that when the, when the shelter gets pocket pets, whether it be gerbils, hamsters, rabbits, ferrets, um, that we are conveying those to a local vendor, uh, a local Petco or PetSmart, whatever it may be, for them to sell. And so we're not holding them, we're not housing them. Um, in real life, we have lots of adoption for those and so we are matching those you know if we get uh, we got uh, three rats in last week we had somebody immediately was like I know who wants those rats let me match them with this customer and so cuts out uh, you know Petco's happy to take them uh, as well as PetSmart uh, but if we have somebody we can match them with and so that's a hole in, in our system where we need to go ahead and put a fee in place for those things but as it stands right now uh, we're simply leaning on paw, uh, Contra Valley Paws for cats and dogs. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and forgive me, there was one incarnation of this proposal where we had talked about uh, that our first um, delve into the RFP would be for two years, um, but that just made the numbers work. And so it is a one-year term uh, with four additional optional years. Okay. And to kind of talk about what the timeline of this would be um, is that we're bringing it to you today uh, for discussion. We wanted y'all to have a copy of the request for proposal. I know that the council is going to look to y'all's expertise to be aware of, is this what's going to serve us best as a community um, to the extent that um, that y'all are happy with it or, or the changes that you want are non-substantive, we can go ahead and publish the proposal tomorrow, meaning that it would be available um, online uh, to the public uh, for any vendors to come forward uh, to start preparing that proposal. Uh, we would give a couple weeks for response. Uh, I think we expanded that to three weeks to accommodate the holidays for anybody that has any closures over the, um, the holiday scheduling. Um, and so responses would be due uh, January 5th. We would convene, uh, I, think, I believe that's a Friday, so that Monday we would convene the subcommittee, which is defined in the RFP as myself, uh, Bob Solace, the Director of Neighborhood Services, as well as your chairman, uh, Ryan Smith. So that subcommittee, uh, and that's flexible as well if we wanna talk about that. Um, and so the subcommittee would convene at that time. We would review this responses. We would identify, um, is it a negotiable response? Is it something that we can go forward with a contract? Uh, what terms in it uh, would we you know, want to re review further? And then uh, at that point, we would take it to the council for approval at their January 23rd um, city council meeting because they're slightly off cycle because of the holidays as well. And so that's the council date that we would be. And so um, that is a comfortableness that I have with um, having it before council for contract approval about 30 days before the existing contract expires. So that's the timeline and why we had a special meeting today was to try to uh, get on that January 23rd. 23rd council meeting. And with that, I know that was short and sweet. I know the RFP is a massive document, but it's largely unchanged from the prior agreement. Uh, many of y'all have been to the facility. You've seen how this partnership works. Uh, we can discuss the RFP in greater detail if y'all have um, specific issues that you want to go over, but that's largely the, the high points of what, what's going on with the uh, request for proposal. Any questions? Any 
comments from the public? Let's just proceed with the RFP as written. Is there an opportunity to have a, a motion, a uh, minute of action on that, please? Okay. I move that we, uh, what's the language we need? Authorize, put out? Approval of the request for proposal. That we give approval for the request for proposal. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We'll proceed with the RFP as written. All right, do we have any follow-up or administrative issues we need to discuss, Morgan? No, sir, I'm just I'm grateful for, for y'all coming forward uh, for this off-cycle meeting, and I hope everybody enjoys their holiday break. And I know, just for public information, Morgan does have uh, some openings available at the shelter. Yes, we have job postings uh, almost constantly, but we, we uh, have some, I believe, that one that'll publish tomorrow um, for anybody looking for employment at the shelter. We're happy to, we're hungry to get uh, fully staffed, get folks in place and, and trained uh, to serve our homeless pets. We've got a great leader out there and we just need some great support staff, so. Anything else from anyone? Oh, yes, Jenny. to take the opportunity real quick to to tell everyone that we are having a large-scale adoption event Saturday at Petco um, and we've had some tremendous sponsors step up so all of the adoption fees have been paid wow. so we're hoping to move a lot of animals we hope hmm. maybe 30 to 35 animals on Saturday so if you follow us on Facebook if you would share that and help us get that that word out all those adoption fees have been paid now the applicants still have to qualify to adopt still has to be somebody that we're comfortable adopting to, but there is no fee associated with taking the animal the animal home. So we're really excited about that. And we have a couple of transports lined up for January, so we have a lot going on. But if you do follow the page and share that and help us get the word out, um, and come by and see us at Petco Saturday if you want. Thank is you. That on, is that on the pause page? Yes. Okay. Thanks. If we have no further business, then we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>